it's not necessarily a good thing when somebody needs us. If a person does need us, hopefully they only need us once, one time only. Um, unlike real estate agents and loan officers, we don't like repeat business. So Ashley Mitchell, welcome to the ASCC. So this is the concept of this podcast is where we really, in my heart of hearts, really believe that everybody has areas in their life that they're overflowing in, right? And this was a lesson that I learned from my dad. We drive across the country and some guy would be sitting on the side of the road working on some machine doing something and he'd pull over u-turn and we'd stop in and and uh and he's like hey what are you doing and my dad was a genius but it was the opportunity for us to learn from random folks who might have gotten overlooked and their stories and the things they shared were phenomenal so the idea is that we love to share um visit with people and learn about the areas they're overflowing in. And if everybody just shares generously from their overflowing buckets, all of our buckets will be filled, right? Absolutely, it's abundance. Sure. It's abundance, definitely. So you are in the credit business. Yes. I'd like to know exactly, like really quick, sure. like what it is that you do and i also want to know how what is the story that got you to this place gotcha yeah absolutely and how folks can avoid needing to talk to you yeah um i i love that i love uh that that opening um so just kind of background real quick um what got me into this business is i was um early 20s and um, I was engaged and I was going to school and I was working full time at, uh, at an attorney's office and it was, um, overwhelming to say the least. And, um, just knowing that, Hey, there, there's a better way. There's a better way to be, to be happier and to kind of fulfill those certain areas, those changes in my life that were taking place. And I made the decision to, to, to just, you know, um, you know, probably not the most professional thing, um, looking back, but just made the decision that week, Hey, this is, this is, you know, um, this is going to be my last week. I, I need to find something that's going to, to work for me and is, you know, not going to be as, as stressful and overwhelming. And, uh, I knew that, uh, a, a friend of the family had started a, a credit repair business and I reached out to him. I was really curious about it because, I, like a lot of other people, had made some poor decisions when I was younger and, you know, getting married, I didn't, my, my, my biggest concern was, oh my gosh, my bad credit is, you know, it's like, it's, it's, you know, a disease that someone can catch. It's going to transfer over to my husband. And I knew that he had great credit and I, I didn't want to do that. Um, and, and so I was just really curious about it. Um, and so reached out to him and, um, that that's really what started the career. It was um, kind of ignorance on fire, and um, unfortunately, you know, I, I didn't go back to school. But I've really enjoyed the. It's worked well for you. Yeah, for, fortunately or unfortunately, however however you want to look at it. Yeah. But um, you know, it's it's been two years. We are over twenty years later, and 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 I love it. My my heels are, are really uh, firmly cemented into being a consumer advocate. Um, advising clients, providing as much education as possible, because just kind of like what you said, you know, it's it's not necessarily a good thing when somebody needs us, right? Like it's it's overcoming, you know, financial obstacles, credit obstacles, and maybe even some of that generational wiring, um, because we get that a lot. Either you know, it's kind of what you have um, with a lot of students that they're, they're first year students amongst their family we often work with a lot of clients where it's, you know, uh, you know, kind of first generation homeowner. Um, yeah. And that was just because, you know, they, and, it, and it's not, you know, I don't think it's intentionally by, by any means, but you know, there's nobody mentoring them. There's nobody going, Hey, here's how you apply this strategy. Here's how you apply this methodology. 
you know, oh, don't don't pay attention to that because that doesn't apply to you. Oh, no, this is what you need to do. I don't really think that there's anybody out there that's doing that. And so that's really been the platform that we've been running on is providing as much education advice as possible so yeah. that if a person does need us, hopefully they only need us once, one time only. Um, unlike real estate agents and loan officers, we don't like repeat business. Uh, we really want the ability and the opportunity to just, you know, uh, kind of that, that rate of absorption, you know, have you absorb as much information and knowledge from, you know, from the, the company, from, you know, working with the analyst, um, as well as the services and you, you never need us again. And, you know, we love getting progress reports from clients yeah. six months, a year later that they've done this, they've accomplished this, or, you know, we've kind of shut, set some short term goals for them, which most of it is, is purchasing a home, but then it's like, okay, what, what's, what's the next goal? You know, how do we make sure that you're optimizing uh, everything when it comes to your credit through, you know, better uh, interest rates on, on autos, uh, getting the next best line of, of revolving credit that's going to meet your spending needs, you know, and or insurance, uh, you know, making sure that you're not paying the, you know, the absolute maximum because in the state of Texas, 49% of your, your insurance is impacted by your, your credit scores, unfortunately. So that's a lot of stuff right there. So, so Sorry. basically I, I'm going to just say credit um, yeah. is not something that people like to talk about. It's like an STD mm -hmm. and I, and that's probably a horrible analogy, but when I'm hearing you, when I'm, when I'm thinking this, that's the first thing I came to my mind and nobody wants to talk about that. Nobody does talk about that. Nobody wants to talk about the, the negative things that happens in people's lives, um, because of either, um, misinformation, um, bad circumstances, poor choices, whatever it is. And then we grow up, we yeah. look back and we're like, oh shoot, what have I done? But you don't, you can't stop. You can't keep doing what you're doing and you got, and you have to move forward. So that's where we have, to, you're like the treatment to the credit challenges. Cause in our day and age, it impacts just about everything you did. You do, just like you said, car insurance. And I don't think people realize homeowners insurance, turning on your utilities, uh, like turning on your utilities, if you're having to put down a deposit or you can just go ahead and put down, turn on your utilities. They're like, they don't even worry about you and it's easy peasy lemon squeezy, yeah. right? So many things that it impacts. What are the biggest things that are impacting people when it comes to their credit that's reducing their credit viability, like looking good on paper. Yeah. So we, we have a lot of people that will come to us and, and that's really, you know, we want to make the, the, you know, decipher, Hey, is, is candidate the, are you a good candidate for the services or Hey, what's really going on with the credit? Um, what are some things that you could do on your own? And I'll just, I'll tell you that the number one biggest uh, challenge that I see with, uh, just with our marketplace, with, you know, from, from young, young adults to, you know, people that are, are, are my age, um, and I'm, I'm 43, um, and, and older is student loans. And what a lot of people, still? it's, yeah, mm, it's, okay. it's there, there really does need to be better education when it comes to, uh, you know, people taking out student loans. They're, they're really just people do not advise, educate how it is going to impact their credit. So what I see a lot of, um, and what a lot of people aren't necessarily aware of when it comes to student loans is they take out a student loan and while they're going to school, um, obviously priorities, um, they, their student loans are deferred. And what no one you know makes them aware of or tells them is, hey, while you're in school, you're still going, this is going to be accruing interest. Now, the only time that we, we saw it not accruing interest was during COVID-19. And there were protections associated with the CARES Act, which did prevent interest from accruing, which was great, phenomenal news. That's, for, so, for many far, that's so history now. It is, now yes. It's accruing interest. So let's say, what is your average, what would you say your average annual in this day and time student loan is? Is it like 25,000, 50,000? What's your average student loan you're, you think is right now? Um, I would, well, just what we see, what, what we come across is usually anywhere from about 80 to $120,000. In total or for per year? In, in total. In, so let's just, just for numbers, $100,000. And what's the interest on that? 
Usually interest rates for student loans are kind of capped right at about maybe six to 7%. So um, let's go with 6%. So they're accruing at 6% a year. What That's $6,000 a year, right? Yeah. So, so that hundred thousand turns into a hundred six thousand turns into a hundred twelve thousand, and when you say it's deferred, what that means is they can get the loan. It'll keep the the principal amount, the base amount that they have to pay back, continues to grow even if they don't make payments to it. Correct. Yes. Right. And yes. then they graduate. Then what happens? So then, you know, then they graduate and like, like most, you know, most people, they're still kind of trying to get their footing and maybe want, you know, not necessarily have a job that's going to, um, you know, meet their expectations in terms of pay. So they continue to defer it out for another six months um, or get on. They defer it like six, 12, like before they start making payments. It honestly, it really varies. And I, and I, I, I don't, um, I, I really, I, I can't answer that question accurately. I know that you have like really kind of up to two times to, uh, to quote unquote consolidate it. But as far as deferring, there is going to come a point in time when, you know, they you are going to start making payments. You, you have to start it. And there's, there's a lot more provisions that are associated with it. Like if you, if you've been in, you know, kind of a civil servant for 10 years, um, then, you know, a lot of times the student average. Okay. So, so basically you can go to college. This sounds like a great deal for the loan people offering the money. So yeah. basically they give you money, they keep making money off of it, right? They keep deferring, you never pay it down. You can defer it after college, but eventually, is it, is it true that you can just make interest only payments so your you principal can. doesn't go down? You can, and that that is absolutely, I strongly advise and I strongly recommend because where, where the student loans can adversely impact the credit score. So let's just excluding if there's no late payments associated with it. But what I see on people's credit reports is they'll have the opening loan balance. So let's just say if it's $100,000 is the total amount of the student loan that was taken out. And because it's been deferred, 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 now let's say, you know, there's, there's $160,000 in interest. So how this actually appears on a person's credit report is as though that installment loan is over 100 percent maxed out and and so it pops up as a scoring code so and and you know loan officers really aren't taking a look at that information they're not really diving deep with it because they're just seeing hey you know here's uh here's what exceptions are coming yeah, back yeah. but most you know, and most of our clients are, that's, that's the goal that they graduate from college and kind of like, okay, that next step, that next chapter in their life, what do I do next? And student loans really are, can play a, a negative impact on a person's credit score because it's, it's over hundred percent maxed out, which it's never supposed to be that way. It's just, I, I equate it. It would be like me buying a house for, you know, $150,000. And all of a sudden I look up and now I owe 200,000 on it. You're not, it's, it's not intended to go into that, that negative equity. So um, we do, we, we coach clients on, hey, here's really the best way to overcome that as well as, you know, coordinating with the loan officer because if the student loans are in deferment, you know, there are things that the underwriting, um, you know, underwriting guidelines, what they'll factor into. So we'll coordinate with the loan officer so that this way the student loans aren't having too much of an impact in terms of debt to income ratio, um, but also so that they are then beginning to make payments to it. So that that, you know, either through a consolidation or just trying to get it paid down as much as so possible. When you say consolidation, tell us more about that. It's basically like a refinance. So uh, we send out just it's we uh, have step by step instructions. We want to make it as, as easy as possible for, for the client. Um, many, you know, probably I would say eight to 10 years ago, there was a lot of student loan uh, companies out there that would assist people in in consolidating, refinancing, and they've they've gone away um, because it's it's definitely something that just I mean just like credit repair, just like debt settlement, uh, mm -hmm. consumers can do on their own. But we provide them just free step by step instructions on how you know for them to go in, log into their student loan account, so that this way they could see what what all you know where all their student loans are, whether they're, they're private or government backed, and it's the ones that are government backed that will allow the, the easy steps to go in and to consolidate so that this way, that original balance, you know, it, it doesn't get lower than the current balance. So that this way they have the ability to go in, whether it's interest only payments, 
um, you know, but going in and start making payments so that this way it's not adversely affecting the credit score. It's not adversely affecting them. So it sounds like for those who have kids who are getting student loans, um, really consider um, start paying on the on the interest as you get the loan, right? right? So that it doesn't add to the principal balance and maybe stay under that. Let's if you get a hundred thousand dollar loan just keep that principle underneath so it's not maxed out at 100 percent. So, sounds like something that we could do right that would help and Absolutely. make sure it's government backed it seems like that's there's value in being government backed versus privately owned yeah you have a lot there's a lot more options um and this is just from from my you know my tell end of it and working with clients there's a lot more options with with government backed and they typically are just a lot more flexible for for people to work with that sounds like a great deal okay so is there anything else we need to um, cover under the student loan thing? I feel like I got a pretty good grasp on that. And any more questions, just ask you, right? Absolutely. Yeah, that, that's pretty much the nuts and bolts of it. Um, okay. You know, other than the fact that, you know, hopefully, um, hopefully we will see some student loan reform, which will just help students more and help people just, you know, accomplish what, what their goals are in life. So, so student loans. Mm -hmm. What would you say is the second most derogatory, impactful, negative thing that shows up that yeah. impacts people? Did I say that correctly? You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, it's it's it. it there, there's a lot to it. And so, yeah. So um, and that's really we, we do. We we want to advise, educate people because that's really our goal. Uh, I feel like our core value is how do we protect the credit score? And so my my other recommendation that I would I would strongly encourage people from not utilizing, staying away from are uh, either kind of like a payday loans. I know there's there's a lot that are out there and there's um, a firm and not to not to throw them under the bus or anything because uh, it I, I think they help a, a lot. But um, how that actually appears, it's, it's a consumer loan and, and they're short term. So they, you know, a person might have, let's say, um, and I had a lady, a, a, a lady tell me this, that she uses a firm to, she'll go and she'll book an Airbnb and she'll book it out two, three months in advance. And this way it gives her an opportunity to it's kind of a layaway program. So, oh, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yes different, different type of, of, of kind of finances or furniture. Um, um, they, they, a multitude of, of things that you can just kind of finance and it, and it appears on your credit. I think they make it pretty, uh, pretty easy to, to obtain, but that does adversely affect the credit score. And, um, just because it takes 24 months of a positive payment history on an account before it no longer counts against you. So a lot of times these are like six month loans, three months loans. And recently, you know, I would say probably since, you know, the last four years, we've seen an uptick in those items on people's credit reports. And so it, it does adversely affect the credit. And especially, as I mentioned, a lot of our clients, the goal is to, to get into a home. And from an underwriting perspective, if they have several of these affirm loans out or other type of, um, you know, kind of shopping loans or, or payday loans, um, that does really have a strong impact um, on, on the underwriter because, I mean, how it looks as though you, you're having trouble paying your bills on time, even, even though it's kind of like a layaway program, but from an underwriter and how that appears on the credit report and how it, it negatively impacts you. So what's interesting yeah. is I remember when I was younger and I had zero credit, somebody said, go to a furniture store and buy the cheapest thing in the furniture store and make monthly payments for six months, 12 months consistently on time. And that's how you can quickly and easily build excellent credit. Yeah. Those, what is your thought? What is the what is a great way for young folks who have zero credit? And I ask this is kind of for myself because I've got a couple of young boys who don't have credit. How yeah. can they build their credit other than like I put one on my good credit card? I put his name on there, awesome. and then he immediately got excellent credit. But how can they build their own? So that authorized users are are a great way. Um, I've I've got a nineteen year old, and then I've got a soon to be eighteen year old, and so. Um, we, we did that immediately for, for both of them. 
um, really even prior to them turning 18. So the moment that they turned, um, uh, my 19 year old, the moment that she turned 18, she already had established credit. Um, and then from that was able to obtain a couple lines of, of you know, revolving credit cards in, in her name. Um, and and that's, that's been incredibly satisfying as a parent to see that that level of growth and having, you know, a 19 year old, you know, not make the same mistakes that I did. It's, it's, um, it's mind blowing. But for, for those that maybe aren't in a position to have their parents, uh, you know, co-sign, there, there are some, some really great programs out there. Uh, Discover Student is one of them. Um, and, and Capital One too is, is really actually, um, while they, uh, it, they can have a higher tendency to uh, remove being removed through challenged on on a person's credit report if it's derogatory uh, but they do they make it relatively um, simple from as compared to other lines of, of revolving credit other banking institutions Wells Fargo Bank of America um, you know, capital one does make it easy and and the website that I refer people to it's it's called credit cards so that's it's you know plural credit cards.com um, that website has been around since since I've been in the business, and that that's really it's, it's who I go to, and you could shop, uh, kind of the, the ranking if you're either trying to establish credit, re-establish credit, and it'll provide a plethora of cards that that will work for you based upon your where your credit is. Um, I know a lot of people use Credit Karma. I've I've never logged on and, and used Credit Karma, but I know that Credit Karma will kind of offer the same thing. What I've been told is solicitation through other lines of, of revolving credit, um, you know, and then just the education side piece for students is, you know, or those that are establishing credit is, you know, you have to be disciplined in these habits and whatever you charge to the card, do, do not exceed more than 30%. So a lot of times, you know, they are getting set up with low limit cards, $250 limit, $300 limit. And, and that's just, you know, the, the bank is just testing the waters to see how well they're going to do, you know, are they going to be disciplined or, you know, are, you know, is are you maxing it out to that? Are you, are you capping it at $70? Yeah. Or are you going all the way to the 250? So is it good if they, okay, let's say they do the math. Let's say it's 200 for easy, you know, the max that you can get is 200, which yeah. gives you 30%, which brings you to $60, right? Is it better to keep a $60 balance or is it better to put on $60 paid off, $60 paid off? How's that? How does that best? Absolutely. So what, what I advise clients is you want to charge that, that minimum. So charge the minimum. Don't use the card anymore. What, once you've reached that, that dollar point. And then when the bill comes in you, or, you know, you get that online notification that, Hey, here's your, your statement due date, pay it then. Um, don't pay it prior to the close date um, and you don't have to carry over a balance. But typically when most creditors, when they report with the bureaus is on the statement close date or one or two days afterwards. And then that information, when that gets reported with the credit bureaus, because it's going to show, you know, balance, you know, uh, previous month's payment history, all of that data gets factored into the person's credit score. And so that's why if, if there's no you know updated data, if it just reports with a zero balance because you're going in and you're paying off every single month before the due date, it's it's going to look as though there's no payment history associated ah. with the gross. So make sure you you pay it. You can you know uh, you don't have to carry over a balance just when that statement is due. Just pay it on or before the statement, but make sure that when that statement closes, it has you know a balance and that balance is below thirty percent of the available line of credit, and you'll see the the credit score increase. I love that. So we carry we carry thirty percent. We we charge thirty percent. It's due on the first, late on the fifteenth. I'm just making up dates. Yeah. Due on the first, late on the fifteenth. It's like mortgage dates, right? That's what I know. <laughs> so don't pay it off on the 29th. Pay it off on the first or the second, third, any time in there, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And then and then repeat, rinse and repeat. Charge right. up to $60, the 30% threshold. Now, let's say they offer you 200, you've done this, they're like, okay, 1,000, 15,000, 20,000. At, you know, I know what I've found is like credit cards will send me and they're like, hey, you can charge this much. And I'm like, Oh, now that's dangerous, right? At, is there a point where it becomes a negative impact on your credit? No, no. Um, 
it really the and it's going to depend upon what the person's goals are. I know that I, I talk to uh, a lot of, uh, you know, uh, professionals and, you know, the goal is I want to be an 800. Um, that's what they've, they've said around their credit scores. So it's going to depend upon what your goal is. If your goal is to be 800, you, you have a healthy mix of revolving and installment, um, I, you know, getting your, your limits increased to, you know, 30,000, 50,000, all that's going to do is help to increase your credit score. And then let's just say if you're utilizing, oh, that just, that is, <laughs> but I, I know there's people that do it, you know, you, there's some people with unlimited, I'm like, yay. Yeah, I'm it's not, I'm not mature enough for that yet. <laughs> you you are you'll, you'll be surprised but it's just you know once again it's just it's just a number so it shouldn't overwhelm you it shouldn't scare you but all it's going to do is all of that information gets factored into your credit score and okay. so the, the higher the limit and and obviously the more disciplined and you you know you stay within those guidelines um as far as making sure that you know you're you're utilizing credit um you know uh with disciplined habits and and behaviors uh, you're just going to get rewarded. And, and if you go to, to FICO, so Fair Isaac Corporation, um, you know, that is the, the, the lender based credit score that, that mortgage company use Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, um, Vantage is really coming into the mix. Fair Isaac, I want yeah. you to know, I never knew that. Really? Yeah. yeah. I, I've heard FICO score did not yeah. know it's, it's Fair Isaac. What I just have. Yeah. Fair Isaac. Uh, oh, Fair Isaac Corporation. Oh, that's lovely. It's, uh, I, f I forget what the, the, the full acronym of it is, but just Fair, Fair Isaac is what they're known for. They've been around since the 50s. Um, really? Yeah. They're <laughs> we, all, we all call it FICO score. Who would have known it's this guy? He's like, it's like a real name. Hey. It's it's a real, yeah, it's a real company. Um, they, they are a stable company. And I can deep dive with you on the, uh, the, the you know, kind of what's been going on between Fair Isaac, uh, Fair Isaac Corporation and, and Vantage. That's always kind of a uh, fun little talk shop. But um, that's really what traditional lenders utilize. Fair Isaac and what? Vantage. 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 Yeah. So tell so, me about Vantage. I don't know anything about Vantage. Yeah. So um, I this is I, I love talking shop about credit. So just if, if I go off too far on a tangent, just say Ashley, stop. Um, but Fair so Fair Isaac Corporation has been around since the fifties, and and that really is the the base model for scoring algorithms. Um, Equifax, Experian, TransUnion, because they're separate from Fair Isaac, they will you know to uh, you know person needs to purchase a home. The bureaus are buying that scoring algorithm and you know inputting in the data that's being reported to them to equate a credit score. So around 2005, 2006, Equifax, Experian, TransUnion came together and they devised their own credit score, Vantage. And Fair Isaac Corporation sued them because they deemed it to be a monopoly, which I wholeheartedly agree with. I think that it is it is very uh i just i feel like it's wrong it makes for, sense it makes sense because we used you'd get one two three then you take the average and then right but if they're all coming together if they're all if they're all coming together and so they not only do the bureaus control the credit score but they also control the data that's being put into it uh, it's more data driven it, society yeah it's it's more to me it feels like it's just it's going to be more biased and that's that's kind of what you're seeing Getting, getting played out now um, because prior to October of 2022, Fannie Mae Freddie Mac guidelines would only take Fair Isaac Corporation credit scores uh, or your FICO credit scores. And since then, they have now allowed Vantage. Um, I have yet to see any credit scores with the Vantage um, or mortgage enhanced credit reports with the Vantage credit score. I have seen an SBA loan application that did have a Vantage credit score uh, that was actually lower than FICO. So, we're getting into a little oh, bit. Of, wow. Okay. Just different scoring algorithms. Um, different companies. You know, you just. Um, Even if they're releasing all of the data, if no. they own, if they own all of the data, right? So then they own all the data, and they're putting that in the Vantage score. And I wonder if they're. It sounds like they're not. You're just saying no. They're not releasing all that data to FICO. So now FICO isn't able to have a. a fair advantage but FICO didn't start collecting their own data they started they were using a third-party data 
yeah, and, and, and let me clarify on that. I do apologize. As far as what they're not releasing, um, Vantage and Fair Isaac, because those equations, it is it is proprietary information. And when when you talk about like um, just the credit scores, I mean that's literally their 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 you know mathematical equations. And so yes. factored into it, I mean it's literally you know like a rocket scientist has has derived these scoring equations for you know, FICO as well as for, for Vantage. So that's proprietary information. So we might know that, hey, here's, you know, 35% of the credit score is based on this, 30% is based on this, and 15 and 10 and 10. Um, but the, as far as actually what really kind of goes into it and, and makes it makes it up. Um, yeah, but, but here's the thing. So FICO is using those three companies as the third party. Yes. But the three companies have merged to form their own third party, but they own all the data so those three companies can choose, pick and choose what they want to give to FICO. You, so FICO seems to be at a far at a major disadvantage here. Yeah. And, and and so if I were wanting accurate information, I would want to go to Vantage because I know that those three companies own Vantage and they can probably and they have access to all the data versus FICO getting how. So how did that lawsuit turn out? Because I wonder, did FICO say did do they have to release all the data that is going to Vantage? As far as I'm aware of, FICO does get all of the, the data. Um, obviously, there's it's you know proprietary. Um, I've I've never looked at it from from that level, but they do factor in, or they're supposed to factor in all of the data that's from the bureaus. Who knows? But nonetheless, FICO it went all the way to the uh, Fifth Circuit Supreme Court, and FICO Fair Isaac ended up losing. Um, oh. And I also wonder if they probably don't have they probably don't have it set up to where they put themselves in a position to be able to analyze that data because they were more of an information passing point than an information data analyzing point. Yeah, I mean that's a good. It's just I think only time will tell what's. Yeah. Really Sorry for going down that rabbit hole. I'm no, just you're good. It's it's definitely that's kind of why it's just you know it's a we are like you said we are very much a data driven society. And so when, for me, it's just, I really want to make sure that people are making the best informed decisions about their credit. So when people will sign up for, let's say like experienboost.com um, or go to Experian Boost and you log in and, you know, you give Experian, which is just all there is a data warehouses. They're not, they're not government owned. They're, they're a privately held uh, corporation um, that is actually based out of England. So when you go in and you sign up for experienboost.com and you input in your bank account information because you're going to allow access to Experian to see, hey, how you're paying your cell phone bill, your Netflix bill, you know, your Amazon Prime bill. Stop and then down. they report that with the bureaus. So it looks like you've got a couple open lines of credit and it will, you know, factor into the credit score. However, you've now given Experian access to your entire banking information. So now they could see where all of your monies are going. And then all they do is turn around and, and they, they sell it. Yeah. They sell all of that data. So for, you know, for me, it's about consumer protection. And that's really with, you know, when you talk about items on people's credit reports and inaccuracies, we want to make sure that clients really do, are they are armed with the, the most amount of knowledge is like, hey, yeah, these are some great pluses that, that Experian is offering. But as long as you're aware that this is taking place and this is going on, have at it. But if you're not comfortable with that, don't do it. And here are some other steps and strategies in order to improve the credit score without having to, to go through those channels. I'm sure depending on situations, depending on circumstances, but there's some cookie cutter like, okay, this is generally the advice that people need to hear for the general issues that people get themselves into. There's just some some credit diseases that are more common than others. So uh, maybe I can think of another word, but it's like, you know, there, yeah. there are some cures that are, you know, like what what is your ibuprofen that you give out on a regular place basis when it comes to credit disease? Yeah, so, you know, um, and we talk to a wide array of clients and, and sometimes it makes a tremendous amount of sense for you know, for them to, to hire us and, and utilize us and, and to, to help us. And, you know, we could see them go down the path that we put in front of them. They do a great job. And others, it just, it doesn't make a lot of sense because, you know, maybe they just have to tackle, you know, the financial aspect of it first and then credit, you know, it's kind of like one, one foot in front of the other. 
Um, but I would say just unilaterally across the board, what, what I'm advising everybody as if, organically. So if you don't do anything, if you don't do anything else, you know, you, you don't, uh, you know, invest in, in credit restoration or, or debt settlement or, or any of that, um, pay your bills on time. Um, just to pay everything on time. I know it's so, it's such a silly concept. It's too easy. Um, it's so time. Yes. That, that, it's so and it, it's fun. And I think people, I don't know, maybe they got out of the habit or, or something. And I think maybe like don't COVID. Uh, and that was forever ago that, like I say, that's history, but there was so much grace and forgiveness there. I think people were able to work it out, but yeah. things were getting stringent again. And we just, need to prioritize paying bills on time. I absolutely. Okay. So we got pay bills on time. What else we got? Um, so, I mean, second is just, uh, you know, keep proportion of balances, uh, in 30%. check 30%. Yeah, 30% and, and just, you know, keep inquiries to a minimum increase. Or I know for a lot of people can kind of be, um, a little bit of, of a misnomer, you know, what, what are the facts surrounding increase? But when it, when it comes to increase, I mean, you, you know, consumers truly are, you're, you're allotted a reasonable amount of increase per year. And at the what same- What would be considered an inquiry? Inquiry and what is a reasonable amount? Yeah, so an inquiry would be, let's say if I am purchasing a home and my lender does a hard pull, a lot of lenders nowadays do soft pulls, uh, but you know, my lender's like, okay, hey, great, you know, you've gotten us all the docs, we're going to go ahead, we're going to get everything submitted to processing, underwriting, and we're going to pull credit. That's a hard pull. Um, and it, it pulls from all three credit bureaus. So and it does appear on the credit report. Um, you know, or if I'm, per, if I'm, let's say if I need to get a new credit card, right? um, I, uh, I want to get one that has rewards uh, based, I go and I apply something with, you know, let's say Chase. Uh, Chase will run my credit and that will be an inquiry. Um, it may not be across all, you know, all three bureaus. Um, they may just pull from Experian um, and it may be deemed to be a little bit more of a softer pull than, than, than a hard pull. So a little bit less of an impact. So, so what are the impacts? So like people are, cause I, I get this a lot, like, like the biggest, the, the biggest concerns is, okay, I want to, is a soft pull going to impact my credit? Um, and also if I'm shopping lenders and they all do soft pulls, if they all do hard pulls, like, is there a time frame in which it's okay? So let's, let's dive into the mortgage side of this because that's kind of the business we're in. Yeah. I mean, as realtors. So if we can just kind of dive deep in a little deeper into those concerns that so many, they're just, they want to have, they, their credit impacts. Yeah their interest rate and they just don't want a lender to come in all willy-nilly it yeah and one one more one more dig one more hit on the credit what's the impact that it's going to have so that's really why soft um you know soft increase soft pulls are really the way to go because you know it's still going to show up as an inquiry but you're just you're not going to take that hard hit because there's still not a, a kind of a quote-unquote lending decision lending criteria that goes into it and it's not quite that of, of a consumer pool. So if, you know, I have a monitoring service, I, I monitor my credit. And so when I go in and I, I refresh the report or I pull a new report, that's gonna have zero impact on my credit score um, because I'm the one that's pulling it. So it's for my, my permissible purposes only. So if I go in and I pull my credit, mm -hmm. which we're allowed one a year, right? Or You're as many as we want. Uh, so to clarify on annualcreditreport.com is, uh, which is, and that's also owned by the three credit bureaus, um, annualcreditreport.com allows you to access your consumer credit report for free. So you have to go to each Equifax, Experian, TransUnion, you can get a free credit report there. Since COVID-19, um, they now allow it every seven days and, and that, that perimeter hasn't changed. So you can absolutely log on, go in, pull all three bureaus, see how it looks. Uh, the information is not as condensed as it used to be. And it's, you know, if you pull all three bureaus, you're probably going to be looking at about 120 pages on average. Um, it's not user friendly. So you can, if that's in a PDF form, you just take that PDF, you drop it into AI and you say, summarize this for me. There you go. I love it. Yes. Um, yeah. Working, working smart, not hard. Um, genius. I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to take that note down and, and tell clients to do that next time they, they want to <laughs> in your credit report. Um, 
but uh, yeah, so if you, let's say if you, you know, you have Experian.com and you go to Experian and you, you pull credit every single day, you're looking at it or you're refreshing information, it's not going to count against you. It's not going to have any okay. factoring to your credit score. A lender pulls credit and they're not even going to see you pulling your own credit. So, a so, so you made that hard pull sound like, how does that hard pull negatively impact my credit because for folks who are like on that cusp of like this is going to get me a 5.25 and this is going to get me a five it's not that extreme but you know what i mean i'm yeah. just throwing numbers so yeah. how does that hard pull negatively impact them because yeah. you have to have a hard pull in order to get a credit absolutely in order to get a line of credit absolutely yeah it's and it's just it's it's one of those kind of um it's just a, a ways to an end, so to speak. So in order to get this, you're going to have to do this. Um, and that's, you know, why every little bit, every point counts. So before you're going in for that lending decision, make sure, hey, proportion of balances are paid down, you know, just kind of the, take a look at your credit, spot check it, make sure that really, you know, kind of your, your credit house, so to speak, is, is in order. Um, but inquiries, so, and if you go to, once again, FICO, you go to their website, it, there, it's, it's, it's really a rabbit hole. There's a plethora of information, but they do talk specifically about credit, uh, credit inquiries. And there's, there's not really a, a magic number as far as how much one inquiry is going to impact a person. Um, but, but what we do know factually, and, and once again, on their website, this information is readily available to consumers, is that the higher your credit score, the less an inquiry is going to have an impact. Because how it's considered a high credit score is that like 600, 700, 800? The higher it is, the less of an impact it's going to have. So, but if, if somebody came in and, and you're like, oh, you have a high credit score, what are we looking at there? So, 750, 725, 650. Yeah, so for me, 720 to 740, I deem that to be a quote unquote perfect credit score. At, at, that, mm -hmm. at that score, typically you're going to get the best interest rates um, there are out there. So, I, and obviously the, the higher, the better I've once, there's really not much of a difference between like, you know, 740, 750 and like an 800. I mean, you're, you're prime credit. You're, you go in and you apply for something typically, as long as you can afford it, you're, you're going to be able to, to, you will, you know, uh, right. so, um, 740 or more you're yeah. like, okay, you're splitting hairs. Go ahead. So if I have, let's say my credit is 740, it's yeah. right there on the cusp, right? Let's say 745. And then, but I want to go to this lender and I want to shop this lender with this lender. You have, you have 14 days to go and to shop as, as many lenders. Yes. As long as so it's I just have 10 lenders do hard pulls in a two week window. It will so count as one. Say, so I fill out the applications. Don't do a pull. Fill out application. Don't do a pull. Fill out application. Don't do a pull. And then I'm like, pull. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just want to clarify. I know this is you're like that is absurd. Yes, I understand it's absurd. Like who does that? But I just want to like it's it, it'll be equivalent to one. Yes. Yeah. It's no, I, I get it. It's just making an extreme point. But yes, um, those inquiries will still show up on the credit report. Um, it really because they they do. It's 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 factual. It's fine. Yeah. Totally fine. Yeah. But it it is. It's in that fourteen day timeline as long as within that same industry. So it's not like within a 14 day time frame. if you're like, I'm gonna go get some credit cards, I'm gonna go get a house, I'm gonna go get a car, I'm gonna go get an RV. Right. It's, it's, <laughs> it's meant for that one. It's what happens a lot. What's interesting, we always joke, it's like when you see somebody buy a car, you're like, oh, they're almost ready to buy a house. <laughs> right? like, and I don't know why, but if you're buying a house and, I, and when somebody's buying a house, I'm like, don't buy a car, don't buy anything, don't touch anything, like I don't know your credit, it's junk. Like, don't buy anything. Don't even pay stuff off. Don't do anything. And that, that brings me to how come, how, like, this is a lender question, but I'm going to ask you, Go for it. how can sometimes, can sometimes paying stuff off or doing stuff or think, what is the things that people do that they think is positive for their credit, which actually turns out to be a negative? Yeah. So, um, and once again, talk to your loan officer about this. I'm going to kind of add that disclosure on there Absolutely. because, um, you know, they, they are really the ones that truly do, they, they, they hold the keys. Um, but what, what I've seen a lot of is, um, you know, people will just go in and they'll, they'll start paying off loans. 
um, you know, whatever it is, maybe it's, it's a personal loan from their bank. Um, maybe it's an auto loan. And so they go and they pay off all their loans. Cause obviously they're like, Hey, I don't want it to impact my, my DTI. And I want to get this particular house and I want this interest rate. So I'm going to go and pay all these things off. Um, I'm, we're in the same boat with you. Be, be careful about it. Don't, don't go in and don't, you know, do anything crazy because, you know, installment loans, um, there, there's only two types of credit. It's revolving and installment. And so if you're going in, if you're, you're paying off installment loans, well, then now there's no payment history associated with it. So there's nothing that's going to be reporting. So that could adversely affect the credit score. You know, if the, let's just say all you then have is revolving. You don't have any installment and, and 10 percent. It's a small percentage, but it still can make up a pretty big difference. But 10 percent of a person's credit score is is based upon the types of credit that they have in use. So, so that's why for those that are establishing credit, you know, really a lot of times the only thing that they can get is, is credit cards. And, and this is how it was for me. So I had two or three credit cards. My credit score was always around 660, 680. And I mean, you know, bear in mind, this was my early 20s and I still had some derogatories on, on my credit report um, and I was on an authorized user, uh, but I couldn't get it into the 700s. And with, uh, I did a secured installment loan, which they're, kind of, you know, almost like unicorns nowadays. It's really hard to, to find someone that can do that. A uh, self lender. Where, yeah, where's the unicorn? Give me, give me, give me a hint. Where do we find that unicorn? Well, this, if, for those that remember, uh, Community Bank back in the day was the one that, that offered it. Um, and they, uh, they got eaten up by Legacy. And then I think by, you know, I don't even know who it is now, but um, self lender. So S-E-L-F is, is the next, really about the only one out there that I know uh, that's that's going to offer it maybe outside of some some credit unions, but self lender is a great way to go and establish a, a you know some type of secured installment so that it'll report to the three credit bureaus so that this way you can satisfy that that three to one ratio three lines of revolving to every installment and and see the credit scores in the seven hundreds oh, so that's wow. what you, you want to be careful about going in and paying off accounts. Um, you know, credit cards, you go in, you pay off accounts and then you're not utilizing them. So then there's no payment history that's being reported to the bureaus. So those things can just have an impact. So what if you have like an, this is weird, a negative balance on your credit cards? No big deal. It's going to probably report with the bureaus at a zero balance. Uh, they don't ever get into the, the negative uh, side of it, but it'll just show zero. And then you'll have some. I know that's, I know that's a weird random question, but. Um... No, it's one. It's a good one. So what about IRS bills? How does that impact your credit? Yeah. So um, public records, the only public records that are on, a, on on people's credit reports today are bankruptcies, chapter seven, chapter 13, and in some certain instances, chapter 11, which is more kind of business, uh, business bankruptcy. Uh, but since COVID-19, we, I have not seen federal tax liens. I have not seen state tax liens. I have not seen judgments. Wow. And, really? Yeah, and this can get a little hairy for for those that are wanting to purchase a home. Um, it's up there, doesn't it? It's uh, lenders will pull uh, a, a tri merge credit report, so Equifax, Experian, TransUnion, and then they'll also pull LexisNexis, uh, which LexisNexis is just. Um, I would strongly I'm encourage with these names. Yeah. Nexus. Nexus. I, I I know this is weird. I'm thrilled with the names of all of these different platforms. Lexus <laughs> Nexus. Let's go. Tell Lexus. Me about Lexus Nexus. Sorry. Oh. I'm so sorry. I just I I love these names. Of yeah. Fair Isaac, Lexus Fair Nexus. Isaac. Let's go. And, uh well well once we get done talking about Lexus Nexus, then I'll talk to you about Anovis, um, the fourth credit bureau. So uh if you have not pulled the Lexus Nexus credit report I would recommend doing it. There is a plethora of information. It shows every speeding accident or speeding ticket you've gotten, every car accident, um, whether you were at fault, not at fault, lawsuits, public How records. You know that? A it's, uh, um, so Lexis is L E X I S and then N E X I S, LexisNexis.com. I was I not spelling that correctly. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, and like, I think the website, you'll, you can see the link on their website directly, but it's kind of, it's for like consumer risk. Um, but I strongly recommend, encourage everybody to pull a LexisNexis credit report because 
there is just a plethora of information. I had a, a gentleman recently that, and he's a real estate investor and has continued to invest in real estate. But in 2008, when the mortgage meltdown occurred, he had roughly eight or nine homes that went into foreclosure. And, and so now he's applying for a business loan and they pull Lexus Nexus. And we, we went in, we, we pulled, pulled the report, got the report, went in and disputed all of the, the old foreclosure information along with, you know, old addresses, AK information. And fortunately that information was removed. Um, so so how, long, how long does it have to remain on your credit before you're allowed to remove it? Um, or at what point are you allowed to remove, like, like just if we're talking general terms, like foreclosures, like some, some things like that. Cause I know that there's different terms for different, like things like that. And you're saying if they don't automatically drop off, it seems like they, you have to come in and. Yeah. Well, this was LexisNexis and this is just, they, I mean, this just goes to show you the data and the years of data in which they, they maintain, but, um, it, it's, it's, it's public record information essentially. And so, um, you know, just to, and that's who the, the, his business, uh, banker was pulling from. And so, you know, fortunately, I, I mean, I was, I was relieved to see that we were able to resolve those so that it's not an issue for him. Um, you know, or he was concerned it was going to be an issue. So, um, but with, with the bureaus, Equifax, Experian, TransUnion, it's, it's, it's seven years from the date of last activity or date of first delinquency. So, that's always something to be very mindful of. And those are things that, that we look at in people's credit reports as well as kind of when, when is the D date? When is that item going to be falling off of, of the credit report? And a lot of times like a mortgage enhanced report, or even if you just go directly to Experian and you're getting their free report, it, it's not always going to indicate the accurate date of last activity. So collections that have been sold, 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 um, it can be really hard to determine because it, it makes it look like it's maybe a year old, but in reality, it could be from something from six years ago. So, um, yeah, kind of, you know, even though they're long reports, go into annualcreditreport.com. Um, it, it'll have that that information in terms of the the original date of delinquency. So, Anovis is is the fourth credit bureau. So, Anovis is I I typically I haven't seen any collection agencies reporting with them. It's just, it's your, your banks. So your banks and student loans um, is really primarily who I see reporting with them and they don't have a, you know, there's no scoring algorithm, scoring equation to it. Um, but Anovis is the fourth credit bureau. And, and the reason why I've, I've been talking about Anovis just, you know, within the last few years is because when I got into the industry in 2004, you know, we, we saw more of it and it was kind of like, oh, you don't, you don't really need to pay attention to Anovis because, you know, a lending decision, lending criteria, you know, loan officers aren't using it. And in 2020, uh, what, one of the things that we started to see is updates from, uh, from creditors saying that this information has been updated with Anovis, which we'd never seen before. Um, and, and so, you know, I got a little bit curious. And so we started doing some test cases, started, you know, requesting some, some Anovis credit reports. And then things kind of started, you know, coming in. Uh, we had a, a client that had, uh, was applying for a, a home equity loan of credit, um, a home equity line of credit, excuse me. And the, the lender, um, which was PNC Bank, uh, the lender pulled uh, an Anovis report. And then I have a, a lender out of, um, she's in Denton, and sent me over a, a, a credit report for, for one of her clients for me to take a look at. And as I'm going through it and I'm analyzing, um, my, my jaw probably about fell to the floor because, you know, when you see the mortgage enhanced reports and it'll show the bureau that that account is reporting to. So it's EXP, you know, for Experian, TU, um, and then EFX, TU for TransUnion, and then EFX for Equifax, and then I saw INN. Um. So, so anyways, long, long story short, we, we have the last, um, I would say probably since about 2021, uh, we also go after Anovis. We request Anovis credit reports for our clients, and then if there's any derogatory information, we go after it also, just like we would with Equifax, Experian, TransUnion, and derogatory inaccurate information. Just so in the event, if something does happen, our, our clients are going to be prepared. Um, you know, that, that's really the, 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 in 
you know, key to success is, is, is preparation. What's the best way to get a hold of you? Like, of course they can call me and I'll connect them to you, Ashley. But if they want to like, just reach out to you personally, because it's, it is, it's, 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 uh, it's something very personal. And some people like have a lot of personal judgment around that, but they want to have a, that private conversation with you. What's the best way for them to do that? Yeah. So my, my direct number here at the office is 469- 687-9502. Uh, my email signature has my cell phone on it, which is 214-202-2444. And then my email is a.mitchell at whitejacobs.com. Um, th this is my home away from home. Um, you know, I, I bring my dog to work with me every day. He's like our mascot. My, my kids have really grown up in this environment too. So we do, we, we, we genuinely, we, we take what we do to, to heart and it is, it's just, it's, it's for that striving of, of being aware of what's going on in our marketplace with the bureaus and just helping as many people as possible. Because I can tell you more people win when they've got great credit, right? It's just, it makes them feel good. It, it impacts their self-esteem. It allows them to make better decisions. And so anything that we can do, whether it's free advice, free consulting, free education. Our website has a lot of information as well, whitejacobs.com. That's the road that we want because but the, you know, there, there's enough in this crazy world to begin with. People definitely deserve to have the peace of mind of knowing that, that their credit is working for them, not the other way around. Not the other way around. And also like the way I got introduced to you was by referral. So yes. I'm, I'm pretty confident you get a lot of referral business like we do. And people all the time, it's like, I don't want to waste your time. It's like, you're not wait. This is my joy. I love this conversation. And if the opportunity comes for me to, to um, earn your business, I'm hoping this conversation would allow me to do that. And meanwhile, as because this is really a dis-ease in our in our society, right? When when you, if should you have somebody, just say, I know somebody. I got somebody. You yeah. know, if when it comes to real estate, Juan and Bettina, right? Yes. When it comes to credit, call Ashley. Ashley's your girl, right? And Love that's it. all we ask for. Like, that is probably the biggest compliment we can get. Yeah. When referral. Yeah. Let's you know you're doing a good job. I agree. Excellent. Well, I appreciate you, Ashley, um, so I much. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. This has been an absolute pleasure. I, I appreciate it. And I'll definitely, I'll connect with you after the show as well.